Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where we show you guys the coolest creations that we happen to see people building throughout the week. It's definitely one of my more favorite episodes to make in the channel. And also as a quick update for this week, the LEGO Time Machine DeLorean mock from the builder Sawyer has made it into the web store. It's a really fun build. I believe this design captures that look of the DeLorean best compared to any of the other builds that I have seen. And if you want to check it out, our LEGO web store is www.brickvault.toys. And if you want your build to appear at the end of this episode, we have a fan mock creation section. It's like a submission thing. Check the description below for the proper email on how to send those pictures over to us. And also check the description below for the Flickr accounts of any of the designers that we showcase today in this top 10 video. So anyways, let's jump right into the very first build. And here we have an incredible looking Bionicle figure. This this is the Brutaka Samurai version 2 from Mastery Kerr. Bionicle custom building remains unsurprisingly strong throughout the years despite the fact that the theme has been cancelled twice now, but you can see that builders are by no means any less creative now than they were back when the themes were still alive. This giant golden warrior has an excellent set of stances and poses, the proportions for the body parts look great, and the general detailing, or I don't even know if you call it greebling on a Bionicle build, but the general detailing and color composition for this guy is really, really top notch. I like this Bionicle build a lot. And now let's take a closer look at one of the more technically impressive architecture type sets that I've seen in a long time. This is simply labeled Family House by Auk Bricks. And I have thrown the term clean build around a couple of times in the past, but I feel like this uh, absolutely takes the cake and probably is the single cleanest build I have seen. It's that hyper modern style that we have for the architecture. And while I do like the out side of the build, I really do think it is uh, most worthwhile taking a look at the interior. He's managed to turn each section of the house into a wonderful modern, sort of modern interior design for all of the rooms. They're nice little vignettes, sectioned off totally white. Everything looks perfectly organized or just about, and we have some fun, clever designs for small builds. And I am somewhat curious to know if this is a recreation of a current house, maybe the designer's family house, like it might might actually be. I'm not sure. This is just a guess, but it's an amazing build. Often interiors aren't usually what people check out as much when they look at uh, a wonderful modular building or something like that, but this is probably one of the single most complete structures that I've had the pleasure to look at in LEGO, so that's awesome. Up next is the Vulture from Star Citizen. This LEGO mock comes from Goal Plays with LEGO, and like the name suggests, the Vulture is a smaller salvage ship, probably one of the smaller ones from from the overall Star Citizen universe. And from what I can tell based on the concept art for this spaceship, the designer has taken a very good crack at it. This really does look like a top-notch recreation. Really solid build though. I absolutely love seeing Star Citizen built in Lego form. And then being from the Bay Area, I could not help but take a closer look at this San Francisco skyline, or at least this is the second version coming from SobFan2013. This was done as part of the Lego Rebrick contest, and I think it captures some of the more iconic aspects of the Bay Area or the San San Francisco Bay Area particularly. Moving from left to right, you can see the Palace of Fine Arts with the lake, then the largest building in the city, I believe, currently being the Salesforce Tower, then the smaller Coit Tower on the hill that was at some point the highest structure in the city. And moving further down, the Transamerica Pyramid is probably the most recognizable building along the entire skyline. And then we have a fun little creative build for showing one of the hills, a trolley car, and behind are those painted ladies, those famous Victorian houses. Obviously, you can see a larger build for the Golden Gate Bridge in the back, and I'm not sure if LEGO could have done a architecture set that could capture San Francisco quite as well as what we have done here by SobFan. Now, jumping down, we have a very fun build. I can't pronounce the name of this Aztec game, but from what I understand, this is supposed to be a recreation of that famous Aztec game, or one of them, where you are supposed to be throwing that ball through the little 
little ring that's hanging out there through the little donut. I think that guy's jumping off of the other guy's back. You can see a somewhat micro build or at least a forced perspective build of a larger pyramid in the distance, which I absolutely love. And this is what I would call a full composition. You've got the background built in with the sky and then a complete setup for this ball pit or ball wall. I'm not entirely sure what the rules of this game are, but it looks like fun. And the builder W. Navare has definitely captured something unique. Now, I don't build very often with Technic and I feel like I'm not very good at judging the quality of a Technic build unless it's like really, really good. And that is definitely the case here with Nikolai Gamura. He did the Lego Technic Toyota Helix N40. And you can tell that it has been modded quite significantly. And even when I first looked at it, I immediately knew this has to be the truck from Back to the Future. And it definitely is. Having just completed the DeLorean build myself, I've been re-watching some of the movies. And this was considered like the coolest car, at least in Marty McFly's eyes back in the day, which I think is so fun. And we really do have a high quality look and build. I feel like this is something that Lego could produce in one of those giant uh, sets that they did for the Porsche or the Bugatti, though I doubt people would get as excited for a truck. This still is, I think, just as high quality as either of those builds, maybe even better. And all right, let's jump down to the next build. This is Gnome Castle by Swan Dutchman. Castle builds are by no means a rarity within the Lego universe, but there are some very unique takes done for this particular Gnome Castle that I haven't quite seen before. And I think that first thing you're gonna really notice is the fact that the Twin Towers are somewhat split and moving away from each other ever so slightly. It adds to that fun sort of cartoony effect. And I would really like to know exactly what's going on inside uh, the castle in order to get the bricks just a little bit off angle. I have a feeling that's probably not a legal or totally legal technique, but it looks amazing. I get the impression that that very colorful window we're looking at is stained glass. And you can see a chandelier up at the top, and this is probably a build that would benefit greatly if it had some LED lights to kind of snazz up the rest of the stained glass windows that you can see in all the different towers and spires and basically all of the openings. Okay, now moving down to the next build, I think I would put this one actually at my favorite of the entire week. This is the Year of the Pig. That's the title of this build by King Marshy. Brick built figures are starting to become my absolute favorite thing to take a look at during this weekly episode just because the level of creativity is totally boundless and you can really start playing around with some fun ideas. I don't know how to say the name of this guy totally correctly, so I won't, but check out the description below uh, in the Flickr link for this particular build if you want to learn more about him. It is based on the Year of the Pig from the Chinese New Year, but we just have such a fun design. Even the hooved feet, the dish piece used for the belly is probably my favorite bit, but there's a fun combination of bionicle pieces used when they're necessary, but a lot of the build is still sort of fleshed out with system. It really just depends on what kind of shape King Marshy really wanted to use at either situation. You can see he's a big eater. Great build even for the food. It's just such a fun character. I really like this brick built guy. And here we have, I believe, a sky ship. It's called the Bellinatus by Mark of Falworth. Because it's supposed to be floating in the sky, you can see uh, the very bottom of the ship with those three kind of wavy arches. I have a feeling maybe that is supposed to give it a bit of extra traction, even when sailing through the air. The shape of this cruiser or destroyer definitely looks like a warship is absolutely awesome. The walls somewhat curve inwards. The golden decoration in the front is as ornate as you can pretty much get without the ship being completely off weight. And if I had to take a guess, I am absolutely sure that those sails are probably not 100% Lego, but I don't really care at this point. This is probably one of the coolest sail ships from 2018. We're moving on to the station, the space station. I don't know if it has any better or more interesting name than that. It does seem to be loosely based within the Star Wars universe. You can see lots of symbols from the Rebellion. There's a somewhat modified blockade runner that is able to dock with the station. And there's just a bunch of really elegant looking photos and kind of scenes set up here that make this mock feel like an entire mini little space ecosystem 
floating around. From this picture, you can see that it is absolutely massive. And then very quickly, there's a bunch of smaller shots to show different types of compartments, uh, lighting systems, all this kind of stuff. It really is a completely functional floating station out in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's uh, probably one of the bigger and more ambitious builds that I've seen in the last couple of months. I found this build on Corey Lankford's Flickr. I have a feeling there's probably other people involved when actually knocking out this full creation. I highly recommend you guys go check out the uh, Flickers. The link's in the description below. Once again, if you want to send your own fan mock creations to us to have appear at the end of the episode, like these ones are going to right now, also in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And now, here are the fan mocks of the week. Everybody. hope you enjoyed that video I just wanted to pop in really quick and say that we do have a web store brick vault dot toys uh, that sell instructions for super high quality mocks uh, that are built by incredibly talented designers so that is the first link in the description below and also there's other videos too we've got other things if you want to watch that all right thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time at brick vault <laughs>